What's with your shirt? Hmm? It's got Switzerland and an X and an X, like yes. a blue X. No, it's gray. Or are we saying or blue? gray or blue? Or, or, or are we saying blue in the way of a like those blue dogs, the real life blue dogs? Okay, so there's something about color, right? Yeah. And how color is culturally defined. Yeah. And how the word red used to mean red and orange at one point in the history of the English language. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That just, just, just reminded me of the time that I see something that's, or that's uh, red in like I don't know. It's like I, I noticed this in some shows when I, I watched when I was a kid. It was red, but they call it orange. Well, no, that's not it. Why are redheads called redheads when they have orange hair? Hmm. Because uh. red and orange used, used to be the same color. Yeah. Interchangeable. Yeah. And then what happened was people kept on asking, which red do you mean? <laughs> the red like an orange? The fruit. The yeah. fruit. And then it eventually just became orange, orange. the color, which came from the color of, of the, the fruit. red fruit. <laughs> or the formerly red fruit. So what what I'm trying to say is um, I'm I'm covering up my very obvious mistake of calling that cross on your shirt blue. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just when you called it blue, I was just thinking about the description of like I forgot there was like some breeds of dog where the where they call it blue because of the fur, but it's it looks to me like some like some more colorful a dark colorful version of gray. More importantly, why are you wearing a Switzerland T-shirt with an X on it? Yeah, I, that's, that's what I was going for. Like, why? I just had it. I just wore it. I just had it. I oh, well, fair enough. We, we need to wear clothes. But, <laughs> like, why do you have a Switzerland yeah, t-shirt? Yeah, why do you have a Switzerland T-shirt? Mom, with like a- uh, Mom and Dad gave it to me and they got it while they were in Switzerland. Funny choice of having an X. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Is so, Switzerland an extreme place? I don't know. There's there might be a spot for extreme snow is sports. It, is it just X? I don't know. It's supposed. <laughs> like, I want to meet the designer of this. Like, yeah, because it what? isn't. Because the thing is, it isn't a. It isn't the Swiss cross. It is for the people that like are wondering. You know, I should take a picture of it and like put it as part of the show notes. <laughs> this is this is going to be a, a rather informative episode of Bodega Nights, or not informative, but rather like show notey. Yeah, show notey. A uh, show note filled. Um, episode of Bodega Nights. Like, does it have any sort of significance to it? This, or perhaps it really is about the Swiss cross. But you know, design, design looks more extreme. I'll just say that. But yeah, it looks like this is paintbrush. Like, it looks like 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 a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a Jackson Pollock if you tried to like make the Swiss cross. <laughs> Oh, that was really interesting. Like, I never looked at the work of Jackson Pollock in that way. Um, one of your, friends, one yeah. of your friends, um, art major, now a yeah, photographer, like mentioned, uh, that the funny thing or the, the, the cool thing about, no, what Jackson Pollock was trying to do was use chance and uncertainty as his medium of painting, yeah. as, 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 a, as an artistic me- medium. Yeah. Which is really trippy. As part of the method of, of painting. Uh, w- w- it wasn't the method. It was like the... As, as a... Part of his palette. Yeah. As, as like the, the material. Yeah. 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 A material he uses is ra- uh, yeah, random. Is randomness. Mm-hmm. Or chance. It was chance. Which? So for, for the people that are... Uh, for the people that are wondering or that don't know, Jackson Pollock is the dude that... Um, Put splotches of paint on the canvas. <laughs> yeah. It was... Uh, he, he would put canvas on the ground dip his paintbrush into some paint and just sort of walk around and mm. go to town on it. Yeah. So the uh, the uncertainty and chance happened in between his um, his flicking of the wrist as the artist's action and when it eventually falls. Uh, like falls onto the canvas. So that space in between is the chance that is being like referred to as part of the medium or not or, or part of part the, of the uh, making the artwork yeah so so using chance I, I found that really interesting um because like prior to this i just thought jackson pollock was a lazy git or just <laughs> kind <Scam> of <laughs> like I, I put him i put him like more akin to like a duchamp yeah like like sort of that kind of that kind of I'm I'm giving um I'm giving the world of art like the finger by you know signing a urinal. But apparently there was more method to Pollock's madness than I had previously like taken into consideration. 
And that's just something that absolutely blew my mind. Like, hmm. So the next time, I'm going to blindfold myself and photographs <laughs> and take photographs because I need to smell pictures. I need to feel landscapes. <laughs> We had this. So what do you need to no, taste? I, mean, I, I, I stole that line from Pecker. But we we had Becker. this discussion before though. Yeah. Like, is it possible to have a blind photographer? No. Nope. For me, no. Because it's about light. Right. Yeah. And if you're blind, you can't see light. Well, we had a deaf musician. We didn't have a deaf musician. We had a deaf composer. Oh, okay. If you're talking about Beethoven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, um, and even then he, and he was, uh, he was a very good pianist, but, but even then, um, he still like knew what the sounds of each note sounded like. Yeah. Because he wasn't born deaf. Oh. But it was the mastery of each note and yeah. how it correspond, how the symbol corresponds to a sound. Thus he was able to compose. And that, that's another like, um, key difference. Uh, that that sounds too punny because we're talking about music. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's another fundamental difference between photography and music as art forms. Uh, with music, you can memorize the tone. Okay. Yeah. With photography, you can't memorize the way light bounces off an object, which may or may not have been moved since the last <laughs> time you saw it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> or depending on the time, day, or your place in the planet Earth, how the sun will react to that area. Yeah. So, well, yeah. um, so l- l- let's just have this like weird hypothetical situation, mm-hmm. right? Where you are a photographer mm-hmm. and you have like a room where everything is just controlled. Yes. Right. And l- let us assume that the light will always be like that. Like no natural light, just purely artificial light that you set up. Yes. Everything is just As the way is it is. Always. Yeah. And you sit in this room. You memorize each and every nook and cranny and you go blind. Hmm. Is that photography? Huh. Can you make a picture out of it? Yes. But what I'm drawing upon the blank is how the hell are you going to compose your image? If you have, but, but if you've memorized, if you've memorized the space, like you can feel, like you, you feel the wall. Say, okay, fine. Five, Let, let's take- add more layer to it by say you have perfected, say, um, using a 50 millimeter lens knows the limitations of the frame. Yeah, in, in the same way that Beethoven knows exactly what the sound of a piano is. Yeah. And then you already know, say, at specific f-stop, the yeah. measure of the depth of field. Yeah, and you, you, you know your height, you know how far away you are from the object wall. Or, or from your subject you're photographing. Yeah. And say, say it's a, like a round ball, so you know it's how the light will fall and the shadow will fall. You can make a picture. It's still a photograph. Okay. But that's really an extreme case. But that entails, you know, just like what Beethoven did, memorizing everything. And remembering and, and, um, and remembering. knowing what, yeah. yeah, memorization actually. So it's just that photography has a lot more nuances. Mm. Yeah, again. Well, there's a lot more randomness in photography in the mm-hmm. sense that mm-hmm. it, it is an interaction with the world around you. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're like a musician, it is just you and your instrument. And if yeah. you're a composer, it is you and your head. Yeah. <laughs> or you and your inner, uh, and, and the, the sound of your mind? No, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find like a, a musical equivalent to your mind's eye. <laughs> your mind's ear? <laughs> Who's a, there's a photographic critic or not well, not critic theorist who wrote about the mind's eye. I forgot who and forgot this entire philosophy. You're just saying that's a term in photo criticism. But what does it refer eye. to though? Huh? What does it refer to? How each specific artist sees something differently. Mm. That's why even if well, fine, we can actually replicate each photo, especially if in a highly controlled environment, right? By the simple fact of just placing a camera on the tripod. Yeah, it's not gonna change the position. Yeah, and and your individual settings um, are the same. Are exactly no, the like same. Yeah, in, in making a photo, but in making it a photograph for art's purpose, every individual will have a different way of how they want to compose it, or heck, how they want to light it. But then, assuming that all of that is exactly the same. But a different person presses on the, um, presses the shutter. Not, not, not even presses, presses the, uh, remote shutter mm-hmm. release. That way there is no movement and, and no, no manipulation of, like, no minute, uh, 
in manipulation whatsoever are those two different photographs if yeah. they were taken by two different people and they both want the absolute photograph now we really want just to have the same image yeah yeah still counts I, I, from top of my head I think it still counts as two separate photos as two separate images they have the same thing and they have but that's two separate images the so so what makes a photograph a photograph is the the agency behind pressing that shutter of course even if everything else is exactly the same mm-hmm. so it's defined by the author and not the subject of course okay because yeah fine both of it are the same images but now that's why the biggest thing for me when i tell people is the biggest trouble and my biggest satisfaction with images is the context and yeah, well, what if um Say even if they're gonna use it for the same context, still two different images by two different authors. Yeah, but then say, what if they're uh, they're like when when you refer to context, that's the thing that the author or the uh, the photographer puts Imports. as part of the description and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Right. Not not just the description, but anything that will add more to the image that will supplant oh, okay. the, the the partial truth of what an image is. To make the truth complete, quote unquote, it is, it's a repeat term. Uh, I, I see. I, I think I see what you mean. Yeah. Um. So say like, uh, so say we have an image of like those bottles. No. Yeah. And we have two separate, or, and and we use exactly the same camera, exactly the same, same setup. Settings. The only difference is the person who the person the who trigger. presses the shutter. Or, mm-hmm. what, what what's it called? Remote shutter release. Shutter release. Yeah. Um, so there's that, but then it isn't complete without, right? So let's say that you and I mm-hmm. both had a different, uh, clicky shutter m- release moment, right? Uh, if the, so the photo wouldn't be complete without your name and my name. And, um, like, like even if, um, and, and let's just say that our descriptions are, uh, I did exactly the same thing that the other guy did. And like, those are the exact same words for both of us. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 context comes when you have your name and we have my name. That's it. That's two different images. All right. And if you really want to be nitty gritty about it, you can never make the same image. Well, time exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Say you push the shutter first, even if it's the exact same looking image in all the aspects and all the elements. You still took that image. Say even a second before the second image, like. Mm. That, that's the thing about pictures. It also is locked with time. Yeah, yeah. And that's something you can never replicate anymore unless physics can do something about it. This is, uh, <laughs> this is really weird, man. Like when we, when we do like these, like deep dives into <laughs> photography and art in particular, <laughs> like, um, the, how, how, uh, how photography is akin to quantum computing because the mere fact of observation already like alters the state yep and the the tricky thing is we're all we're this is really dealing with photographic theory and many people hate photographic theory (laughs) because you're not executing yeah but you know it's fun it's a lot of fun man (laughs) It's, a lot of fun. it's uh it's it's like the difference between like your mathematics and applied math. Yeah, it's all a great mental exercise. Yeah, and you know a lot of, and and um it's the difference between math and physics. Ooh. <laughs> I don't want to touch numbers. <laughs> <laughs> numbers are fun. Yeah, F stops already confuse me at times. 32 16. No, I mean, I know full stops. What confuses me if it's a third stop? Oh. Um, but then isn't that just like the thing on your uh Yeah, these lens? days it's easier because what do you call that? Because digital cameras make it easier to go full uh half uh quart one third stops. Yeah. Because it's easier with digital cameras, but with film it's harder to calculate. And with regard to using film, the latitude permits like two thirds under exposure, uh, fine. Uh, Even five stops. Yes. Like so it's mm. it's gonna be okay. But sometimes for digital, you need to be precise, like spot on. Yeah. But then, like because of your built-in like freaking spot meters. Yeah. Like it's it's really easy for you to get that. Yeah. yeah and latitude, and and that's for me. I think that's the suckiest thing about photography is it's so technolo- technology based. Then isn't any art technology based? Well, you could still make an image with anything that could write with ink. Yeah, but you're still... You could still write, I mean, write literature with anything that could have ink, even if it's your blood. But with image, you really need to have a box that with a lens. That light. A uh, box with a lens and a photosensitive material. Like, you're really grounded on that. Well, then it depends on... Um, because because you have uh, people like Antion Gilson, 
that will argue that literature isn't to be considered an yeah. art. <laughs> right? It isn't to be considered one of the fine arts because um it's it's its end isn't to be beautiful um the purpose of literature is not beauty it is always subservient to plot mm-hmm. it will always tell a story so i'm not sure that that's like the best comparison no it isn't <laughs> <laughs> but with regard to images i just photography also improves as technology pushes forward like Fine, not photography, but the capabilities of what a camera can do improves as the camera, as the photographic technology moves forward. So what I mean by that is before everybody had to lug around like an entire crew with them <laughs> just to <laughs> photograph, just to bring the ethers, not just bring the tripod and the large format camera, just to bring the chemicals. You need a wagon. Yeah. But, um, now I can go to a mountain and bring my phone. Well, could it the same sort of be said about Say like, um, say before people had like synthetic colors and like all of these oh, yeah. inks and they stuff. They get pigments from Mother Nature itself. Yeah, like um, all like like and and the advent of say different thicknesses of like pen tip. Yeah, like or it opens a uh, brushes and what type of hairs in that brush. Yeah, what, what, I would think it's also sort of the 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 quality of the output is also. Very technology based. Like speaking as a guitarist, mm-hmm. strings, right? I once had an 800 peso guitar. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. <laughs> I played the exact same thing on like a you know 2,000 peso guitar. Sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So I guess technology. Well, the tool is always going to be part of yeah. what the artist process is. Because what I tell people, especially with regard to image making, is the particular tools you use already determines what type of image you're going to make. Yeah. Um and and this is and this is also linked to something that we uh, that, that we were talking about um that uh art cannot exist in the studio of your mind. Yes. Like the end uh, the end product of art is always the execution of an idea. No, oh, well, you know what? I mean, I stand corrected. I should change my statement too. It's not that I don't like that photography is based on heavily like influenced by the technology it surrounds, but I guess what I don't like is the camera is in a constant state of continuous development. Ah, but that's just growing pains. Yeah, because it's a 200-year-old art form. <laughs> right? Like, it doesn't have the same, you like know. Oil and acrylics have been there for how long? Yeah, right? But then, like, say, you know, I, I would imagine that um, when acrylic first came out... Everybody blew their minds? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you had, like, the oil people. Like, oh, screw this. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm pretty sure that that happened, you know. Um, like I'm pretty sure that when the uh, that when the electric guitar was first discovered or not discovered was first invented, like there was a little bit of backlash. I think there was right. Yeah. So like, yeah, growing pains. Yeah, it's, it's just sort of growing pains and something that sort of happens um, over time. And like, is is um, th- there's this this idea that the development of technology is like asymptotic, right? Yeah. Like it starts out with a lot of um, with like a lot of development and then that development just sort of slows down because of the limits of physics yeah yeah i, I wouldn't know yeah but uh i guess right now because especially these days in regard to photography where every year you have a load of cameras just coming out like different types different makes different capabilities and of course digital technology has so many possibilities you can do as opposed to say in the film days where you know you could stick to a particular your film your developer your one camera one lens you could work with that for decades yeah but right now I got you need to improve my what do you call that you need to improve the sensor or, or oh new lens designs are coming out this one's more modern new coatings yeah now again yeah. change just the nuances of your image like, like, well, they're very minute but you know again it already affects what you're trying to make yeah well I, I would argue that the same happens with paintbrushes oh yeah you have a really thick paintbrush <laughs> made out of horse this material or yeah like horse hair and then there's paintbrush made with lion's mane lion's mane <laughs> what a badass paintbrush by the way a lion's mane paintbrush carved from the Himalayas <laughs> carved <laughs> Him- Himalayas I don't know. It just sounds badass. <laughs> then you should then you should go for the premium Yeti hair 
paintbrush. Yeah, I guess the legendary it, one. <laughs> the John just, Cena heel turn. <laughs> <laughs> the Yeti of the WWE. Uh, I, I guess you know, and it's not so bad. It's just that's why I tell people if you find a system. Uh, like not just with the camera, but uh, with a way of working, just stick to it. Or there's, uh, but then you can also sort of go the other way, where if um, where if the end product of um of of, of art is the execution of an idea, mm-hmm. the brilliant technician is going to have the idea and know exactly which tool to use to execute mm-hmm. it. Or what my mentors used to teach me is fine. The camera doesn't matter, and it does matter at the same time because again. If you're gonna do an image and the idea is the first thing that is in your head, of course, yeah. then choose the necessary tools to execute that idea, whatever those tools is, yeah. and whatever resources you have. Yeah. So say, yeah, fine. You want to do like what I tell people is fine. You want to photograph a bear up close. Say you can actually do it, and the bear's <laughs> not gonna kill you. <laughs> you're not gonna use an 18 millimeter full frame lens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or or uh, you want to capture every moment with that bear. So you probably might need burst mode, something that can do 12 frames per second. Or four, now, yeah, the D5, the, the yeah, yeah. Nikon D5 can do 14 frames per second raw Ooh. at a burst rate of at least max of uh, like around 90. Capture everything with the bear. What are you going to go hug with no, it yeah, and just, frolic just in the forest with it? So you can capture every single yeah, moment. Yeah. You're not going to use a Leica in front of a bear because you don't need to be invisible. <laughs> And you don't need the quiet because you're right in front of the bear. Yeah. <laughs> One swipe is going to take you down. Fine. You don't need to Joel Meyer with it. <laughs> yeah, fine. You're quiet. But <laughs> doesn't matter in front of a bear. But so, see, you need to have the capabilities to choose the best absolute tool for the job. Yeah, because the moment... Because, um... And, uh... And I think the... The, the original statement that this came from, um... Is... Like you, you have to use uh, the technology and photography as tools, yeah. and not let them be the thing that controls you. It's it's, it's Which something is we, a common uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a common, common problem with yeah. photography, yeah. Um, and that's uh, it's something that we always go back to on Third World Linux. Yeah. How uh, you have to master your technology, or your technology you will be your master. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback to. Um, God, mystery men, right? <laughs> the Sphinx. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, and and that's a huge problem. That's why I always find it funny when the context that people put in their photos is their settings. Oh, to be honest, for hashtags, I don't mind putting your camera, make or model, because I mean it's like bait. Yeah, and that's what get you like. People are like, oh, or some because they want to explore what type of images come out from this camera. Yeah. Or when so I um, get that, but if you put so much attention, like say you put like you um, underneath, it's, it's a star picture on the mountains. Underneath the stars, that's your title. Shot with blah blah blah. Say <laughs> a Sony A seven R Mark II with a thirty five one point four lens at f sixteen and a at a four minute exposure ND filter for like okay, that's the context you want. The technical details, I don't mind. Fine, that's your thing. Yeah, but that's it. <laughs> Let's say as a curator, that would also sort of depend on which, uh, what, what your, uh, what your venue is, right? Like yeah. what your forum is. Of course. Like when, um, when I was still really active with the Olympus OM2 group yeah. in <laughs> Flickr, uh, the, the, the dying thing the dying that it is. Flickr. <laughs> right. It, it was, a. Uh, it was really important that we gave a lot of, um, that we gave as much technical information as possible because it was so that we could help each other learn. Yeah, for the benefit uh, of those beginning or those trying to practice film again. Yeah, that, that way, like we had, um, that way, if we had the idea, we knew which tools to use. Exactly, because that's a more of a tool centric forum. Yeah. But like when I get conversations, especially like in the curators' conference, cameras were hardly even mentioned. Like, the only discussion we had about cameras is like, oh, yeah, what do you use when you do some stuff on your own? Yeah. That's it. Not even, oh, for this shot. It was a 30-second <laughs> exposure. Like, oh, nobody cares about that because, again, it's a tool. the people, yeah. I mean, the people that you're, the, the thing about that is you're, you're analyzing more of the work, not how the work was made. Yeah. And that's, uh, I had this discussion with, earlier, my friend was talking about this. 
like the other artist like who wants to talk with me regarding street, photo- street photography, right? Yeah. He was discussing with me as well, and I made this observation also. Is that funny divide in photography where there's two worlds? You have your those obsessed with the art, okay. and then those obsessed with the tools. Yeah. And how, how come they can't agree? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, they make good images. Like those who do art can make good images. Those obsessed with tools, they can make good images. But somehow you can't connect that bridge. Like I'm pretty sure. Or, I don't know. I don't know, because probably there is. I'm pretty sure painters don't obsess. I use this with the horse mane and uh, <laughs> acrylic inks by this person. And specifically made, specially made canvas from uh, Vanuatu. Or, I don't know. <laughs> Do they obsess over that when they, they show off their paintings? I'm not sure. But painting has been there since yeah. man existed. <laughs> And yeah, taking true. pictures, two hundred years old. But I guess it's sort of like um, it's sort of like the the difference between like purely conceptual art mm-hmm. and um, art, quote unquote, that is just pure technical mastery. Yeah, right. Like I, I would think that this uh, photography from the quote unquote art perspective and photography from the purely technical perspective uh, sort of falls under not nah, falls under, but has a similarity to that dichotomy between pure um, like idea and pure technical mastery. Like the the, the contention is um, nowadays it's become a mixture of both. Like yeah. you can't have you can't have the studio of your mind and you can't just simply be a dude that copies stuff really well. Uh-huh. Like in order for there to be art, there has to be a confluence of those two. And it took a while to get there. So yeah. couldn't couldn't the same thing happen with photography? Because mm, my answer actually will go because those people who get obsessed with the tool or the technical side, they see themselves more of craftsmen than artists. But it's actually already a pretty tricky term because that implies that being a craftsman doesn't mean you're making art. Which is that that, that yeah that, that's dangerous. Yeah, it's a dangerous territory. But I'm using the craftsman like they're obsessed with. For the craft. The, yeah. <laughs> Just making the image rather than making a body of work, per se, that most art photographers are concerned with mm. and infusing it with the narrative. To the craftsmen, they're just like Ansel Adams is my favorite example of a great craftsman. Yeah. Like, there's no narrative in his works. Fine, you could derive the fact that uh, he, he has a deep obsession with nature and whatnot and, and that's his way of going back and interpreting the nature that he loves the most. That's why he's like an environmentalist as well and all that. But he really is more of a craftsman. And that doesn't say that his pictures are bad. Yeah. Absolutely. And, well, it, 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 and um, if, if, you take, uh, if you take art from the point of view of not the artist and the art work, right? But you take it from the point of view of art as being in the mind of the viewer. If, if we take it that way... Ansel Adams who, is a brilliant artist yeah. because generations of people see Yellowstone Park as black and white. Exactly. Exactly. Well, this generation sees it as a desktop on their Macs. <laughs> <laughs> was, that, was that, is that Ansel Adams? The one on the Macs? Yeah. No. Okay. Th- those are new pictures, but they were taken in Yosemite. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. That same stone, slab, wall, mountain, whatever. Th- that's also the same mountain that Ansel Adams photographed. Oh, that's the problem with landscape photography. <laughs> exactly. It all looks the same if you get it right. But then the context is the name of the person. Exactly. That could be a context on its own. No, nah, it's it's because it's Ansel Adams. <laughs> Which is the trouble for those starting with images as well, with photography, especially pursuing art or fine art. Like mm. when they look at the work, say, of somebody who's prolific, like Araki, Nobuyoshi Araki. Like to them, oh God, everything this guy does is amazing. But sometimes some are just okay. Okay. Or some are, yeah, he already did that. Yeah. Not like that, but. Sometimes Araki comes up with groundbreaking, like, what the hell? Like, when he did Love on the Left Eye, mm. because he turned blind, so all, yeah. all his images painted black on the left side. Oh, that's so cool. Exactly. Because that's how he sees the world now. Yeah. So, it's amazing. Like, that's something groundbreaking, something new that he did. But when he, say, goes back and photographing women in bondage or flowers, like, oh, you already did that. Yeah. Well, I, I guess um, going back to like the dichotomy between the quote artist and the craftsman, um, we we can also make like 
we, we can also correlate them to different uh, to different aspects of the word art. Of like course. art is a word. Of course. Where you have art as in fine arts of the beautiful. Yeah. The, the end or the telos is beauty. Yeah. And the then, artful. Yeah. Then you have art as like the best way to do something. Yeah. So that could be like the art of um, the art of balance. Yeah. And the confusing Shout out thing to anybody that got the Shadows Fall <laughs> reference. <laughs> and the confusing thing about the terms I use is because sometimes the artists are absolutely great craftsmen. Yeah. I mean, I would think that you have to be both. Yeah. Like no, you have some, to... Some like non-golden is diary, point and shoot diary work. Yeah. <laughs> so the technical knowledge is pressing the shutter at the right moment or sometimes yeah, yeah. knowing when to add flash. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Then it's the strength of the idea, but at the same time, the technical knowledge required to execute the idea still is there. Yeah, and, and at the absolute most, and the way she wants her photograph to be only requires that set of technical skills. Yeah. So again, at its core, she's a craftsman, <laughs> craftswoman, and the. <laughs> well, but then, but the then there's still the idea, and there is still that element of like the requirement of beauty. And it is beautiful, and the idea is freaking amazing. But then that that leads down another rabbit hole of what is beauty, and can an idea in and of itself be beautiful? For me, it has to be the output. It's not the idea shouldn't be itself because my my basic tenet of my curatorial criticism, whatever, is that the idea and the execution is connected, like well understood by the audience. Yeah. So it, so so again, it's the um, it's the idea that. There are three aspects. Um, there is the artist, there mm. is the artwork, Work. and there is, is the, the audience. audience. And art this is the tension is the tension between, between the, the three. three of them. And speaking of tension between the three, <laughs> Paolo has been awfully quiet and I'm, breathing a lot. I've just been listening. That's all. Trying to process everything you you've been having a back and forth about. Um, and I I, I was going to say Patreon, but you know you can check out our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. 